Mustafa joins us now in his second year of the program. Mustafa, Ralph Bjornczyk, Brian Mahoney here. Well, as we, as I saw you two weeks ago at uh, Big East Basketball Media Day, you told me you dropped 20 pounds, you've given up soda, you've given up meat. <laughs> Are you still on the same plan, Mustafa? Yeah, you look great. I am. Uh, I definitely am. Um, I don't think I'll be eating meat or drinking soda or anything like that for the rest of my life. No, no sugar. sugar. <laughs> uh, sugar still a little bit, but I, I cut back on that a lot, though. Well, that's, that's great. great. Yeah, and uh, so tell us, uh, you know, now that you're you're deep into into this preseason, how has that weight drop, uh, you just you know, how you changed your body, made your knee and made your, uh, especially with this with this kind of style of 40 minutes of hell and all the additional running, how has that perhaps supported your knee to to make it all the way through March? Oh, it's definitely helped, um, and I think that. Uh, Right now, you know, with the preseason condition and this stuff, you know, when teams start hitting that wall, I think late in the season, I think, you know, that'll be time where we'll, I think you'll see us get, you know, a little bit better maybe. Um, and I think that it's important. I think that, especially for me, you know, going into this, you know, this being my last year and stuff, I think that getting my body right has been very important. Tell us a little bit about in the summer. You went mm -hmm. with the Big East, selection of Big East players to play in the Pan American games. Mm -hmm. That had to be a really interesting experience. Oh, it was great. Um, I learned a lot. I got to play against professionals. You know, guys have been playing, you know, professional for 10, 15 years. Uh, you know, definitely making memories with the guys, you know, across the Big East. It was great. Uh, you know, knowing some of those guys, you know, since high school, I don't think we ever, you know, imagined that we would be doing something like that. So it was definitely a humbling experience, and it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. You know, what, what one thing that's so unique, uh, <coughs> you and LJ Figueroa is, as two players, of course, that, that are the most accomplished players, but you're also roommates, you're very close uh, on and off the court. Uh, just describe that relationship and how that might help you guys get through this season that has so many changes around you. Oh, uh, Like you said, uh, we're very close, and I think being two of the older returner guys I think will help uh, you know, just leading you know, a group of younger guys and a group of uh, fairly new guys uh, to the Big East and stuff like that. Um, I think that it'll definitely help. You know, you know we definitely, uh, you know, you know, bounce ideas off each other's heads, you know, we're in practice and we compete with each other, you know, we're on different teams when we have to guard each other, you know, we make sure that it, we keep it competitive and we compete, so it's fun. And it's definitely been fun, you know, uh, having a friend and a roommate like that. Well, I, I saw a couple of the practices last week and uh, I, I see you guys going at one-on-one -on -one full court yeah. and two-on-two, -two, you, but you always paired up against mm -hmm. one another, yep, no. which I think is very good, very competitive, it's going to make you better. Yep. It's going to make LJ better. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think we take pride in that. And it's, and it's fun. And, 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 you know, going back home at night, you know, and being able to talk a little smack to each other. And then the next day in practice, you got to compete again. And, it's, and then the day after and the day after. So I think it, it builds for, you know, healthy competition. A new guy that, that's competing uh, essentially to raise his bar, Nick Rutherford. Mm -hmm. Nice year last year at Monmouth. But he got here when school started. So he didn't have the entire summer as he finished mm -hmm. up his, his studies in Monmouth to become a grad transfer. He's going to have a lot on his plate, particularly with the news that we heard that John McGriff may miss a good chunk of the season, if not the entire season, uh, with shoulder surgery. Uh, where is Nick Rutherford, and, and what have you seen from him? Because uh, for he's going to be integral in your success. You know, a uh, fifth-year guy, smart guy. You know, he's a point guard. You know, Indiana kid is always, you know, breathe basketball. You know, so he, you know, is somebody that, like, you know, we bounce ideas off of as an, an older point guard, somebody who's in a leader, who, who's an attacker, you know, he all, all, at all times. So I think that he'll be great, and I think he'll be great for us, and it's going to be exciting. Well, well having, having a fifth-year fifth player <coughs> is always helpful, mm -hmm. especially when uh, he's probably 22, 23 yeah. maybe, going up against the say, yeah. A young freshman yeah. is a big difference. Definitely, in, uh, definitely. He has the experience, you know, playing at different conferences and you know, just seeing different competitions, seeing what's out there. I think it's, he'll be good for us. Let's turn to Ian Steer here. Plays just four minutes last year at NC State. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to play at some point, whether it's opening day if he gets the waiver or at some point at the end of the first semester. But he looks the part. Right? Yeah. I see him walking around 6'9", a legit 260. Yep. I'm sure he's probably very good in the weight room, too, just when you, when you see someone's physique like that. Uh, what do you think Ian Steer, uh, Ian Steer will be able to provide immediately when that day comes? I think he's an energy guy. I think that he'll be able to provide great energy for us. somebody who is, uh, is not afraid to bang down in the pain. And, uh, you know, he's one of the guys that, you know, at, you know, 6'9", 260, he can run an eight second up and down. Like, he's a, he's a guy like that. So uh, I think he'll provide a lot of energy and a lot of just enthusiasm for us. Wow, so he's actually a guy that's not struggling through the conditioning drill. So he's actually <laughs> almost made and suited for what this is going to be. I think he will be. That's terrific. And, of course, uh, we're hoping to get some good news about Dunn, the point yep. guard that transfer from St. Francis mm -hmm. College. He went to Cleveland State, sat out a year. It was a ch 
change of coaches, and, and he's here now, and we're hoping to get a waiver yeah. to make it. He's a, he's a very fine point guard, very yes, quick, yes, he is. penetrator, good, good ability. ability. When he was at St. Francis, he scored, I think, 15, 16 points a ball game. Yep. Uh, somebody that uh, I've known since we were younger, you know, me being from Connecticut, him being from Brooklyn, we played uh, in ISA together. We won an ISA championship together in high school. So, like I said, somebody I'm familiar with, somebody who I've competed with, and somebody who I don't mind going to war with, you know, every day. He's a, a hard-nosed basketball player. Behind the scenes, so uh, we hear about the conditioning. <coughs> How would you describe what is the state of, uh, let's say, this team's conditioning uh, is compared to maybe where, it, where it's going to be? Are, are you guys almost where you need to be? Uh, to be able to uh, to effectively run the 40, mi 40 minutes style, or does it take another month, let's say? How about just from that physical aspect? I think uh, in terms of the way we play, I think you're never done conditioning because you got to get – there's always another level that you got to get to, you know, it's, you know, especially as the season goes on and on. It's, there's always another level you have to get to. So every day I think you're going on, you're trying to get in a little better shape every day. It's open in that lung capacity every day. Mm, that's fantastic. And, and I, I think, think it, you know, it's, it's going to take six, eight, eight games – uh, against yeah. other competition yep. other than your, your teammates yep. to really s see how it's going. Yeah. All the work you have that you put in, how does it pay off? Yep. And I think the coaches are looking forward to that, and I know you as a player Definitely. have to be looking forward to that. Definitely. And at the same time in practice, I think that uh, we, the coach does a great job of simulating what a game will be like. So when we break down and we do, like, we play uh, – Five minute quarters where, or four minute quarters where we're, you know, going like, you know, four minutes in media timeout, and then we're doing another four minutes. So, you know, I think the coach does a really good job of simulating what the game is going to be like for us. Terrific. And, and, and uh, Mustafa, <coughs> uh, Brian, and I were, were wondering, you know, uh, one of the first things I thought about when Mike Anderson was hired was was high energy guy and a guy that uh, that that immediately kind of just uh, was a magnet towards energy. Mm -hmm. So the phone, the first phone call you had with him. You basically recommitted to the St. John's program basically within 24 hours. What hooked you uh, that well that will allow Mike Anderson's personality, once fans and people in the New York area get a chance to meet him for the first time, what hooked you like that so quickly that people will see? Uh, he had me in 24 seconds once I saw his uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas number. Uh, he had me. And <laughs> it I was that quick. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was that you quick. Knew, I mean, just you from, who was yeah, right just from you know, the, you know, knowing how he is as a competitor and competing against him, you know, you know, being in the SEC and stuff, so you know that within itself, it had me. No, just knowing, like I said, what type of guy he is, the type of players that he coaches, you know, the guys that I know that played for him. And then another X factor. Once I heard Mike Anderson and got the job, I thought, wow, perfect kind of situation for someone like Greg Williams because of his style of play, being a defender. Now, Greg, right now, uh, uh, questionable with a back injury. We'll see what happens with him the early season. But you figure at some point, Greg Williams will, will take the court with you. It may not be opening night. Uh, how about Greg Williams' fit and what you've seen from him when he was on the court and his growth? Oh, his fit is going to be great, I think. It's, it's going to be tremendous with this team. Uh, he's somebody who can get up and down in transition. He likes to defend. He, I think he's perfect for coach. He's a competitor. I, I think he's, he's a high energy guy, too. High, high, super so high energy Just guy. keeping up fingers crossed that back injury goes, goes away. Yeah, but I think uh, he, he's been doing really well in rehab. You know, every day he's staying on it. You know, he's, he's rehabbing two, three times a day, so he, he's been staying on it. I mean, the little bit he, he got to play last year, you can see, you can see that the there, there's talent there. Yep. There's a lot of talent there, and he's going to get a good opportunity to put in a lot of quality minutes this year. I think he will. Then the next guy I'll touch on, uh, again, a fascinating prospect, Marcellus Erlington, uh, in high school, coming out of Don Bosco Prep, a famed New Jersey high school football power. He had a lot of FBS football offers deep into his senior year. Chooses basketball. Plays limited last year, uh, but all of a sudden now, a year into the system, I wonder where is Marcellus Erlington in terms of his progression. Um, and he's certainly, at least in the month of November, there's a strong chance he's going to have to see minutes. Yeah. I mean, he's a guy that, when we, like I talked about earlier, we have our scrimmages, we play our halves in practice. He's a guy that can get seven offensive rebounds and, and nine defensive rebounds. He's a guy that can just, he just, you know, create space. He's so strong. So I think that, you know, there's always a place for somebody like that on the court. You know, it, it's, he's a brick wall. Like, you know, he sets hard screens. You can't run through him. And he's just a guy that he hard knows. He can get he's after it. He also is a high energy guy. Another high with, energy. With Coach loves high energy guys. That's, that's what, what you're going to need because. Mm -hmm. Club's going to be a little short sidewise, so everybody's going to have to be a, a group effort rebounding the basketball. And then I wonder about David Carraher. Sat out last year after transferring from mm -hmm. uh, being the freshman of the year in the conference uh, that he played in at Houston Baptist. With the three-point line moving back this year, it, the three-point line efficiency is going to be more important than ever before. Mm -hmm. How about your three-point range? 
if you if you feel you've made the adjustment and then a guy like Carraher, uh, who based on the scouting report should be able to adjust to that. I think uh, me personally, I think that uh, I've definitely made the adjustment. I don't think that even when the line was uh, closer than before, I never really shot on the line as, you know, I kind of just shoot it from, you know, when I feel open type of thing. So I think it's been the same thing with the um, three-point line. I think I've been shooting it pretty well in practice. And then to touch on Dave, uh, competitor. He's a super competitor. He, uh, he definitely can space the floor out, and he can get inside too. He, he, somebody who can rebound, somebody just like Marcellus, the guy that gets seven offensive rebounds when we play our scrimmages. You know, he's getting six defensive rebounds. He's competing. He's diving on the floor. So, so you don't think the moving the line back is that big of a deal? No, I don't think so. Oh, I think great. it had to be That's done. Great. Yeah, a lot of coaches I think have said yes, you know, maybe it, maybe it limits who is a three point shooter anymore, yeah. or who isn't, but. You don't think yet, and we'll be watching for that too. I think you've uh, been widen the lane out and get a defense in three seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. college should do that next. Exactly, and you experienced that at the Pan Am Games. You're right, that was the international rules. So yep. you saw you got a little taste of that. So mm -hmm. uh, at some point this year, yourself, LJ, maybe some of the other uh, handful of veterans, with any basketball season, any athletic uh, season, there's going to be tough times. Who are, uh, how about kind of a, who's going to step up vocally? And if you've thought about that, that. At some point, someone's going to have to make a halftime speech or, or pull someone aside that's not a coach. Uh, mm -hmm. How about from that perspective, have you thought about uh, taking on that role yourself and, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe even acted on it already? Yeah, I think from the first day of practice, I've uh, taken on that role, being the guy that is the oldest returner. I think I had to take on that role. It would be kind of weird if I didn't take on that role, I think, you know, for this basketball team. And that's something that I take on with pride. It's something that – because. I think because I had guys that did that for me when I was in, when I was a freshman or sophomore in college, I think that I have to now be that guy that does that for them. Well, you have more experience than anybody else. Yeah. And, that, and that doesn't always fit everybody's personality. Someone has to be okay with uh, maybe someone being a little mad at them at yep. some point, especially in the heat of the moment. And that's mm -hmm. why that, that role can be so tricky when it's not yep. a coach, when it's a fellow peer. And I think that, you know, the thing that you got to preach is it's not personal from the level that I'm yelling at you. It's personal from the level that I – I want you to be successful so we can be successful. Yeah. And, it, you know, you helping us helps. It just helps everybody. So. Well, Mustafa, you look great. 20 pounds, huh? So it's, yeah. that, that, that's for real, folks. That when I saw Mustafa at Big East Basketball Media Day, I was like, there's something different about you. Mm -hmm. And, yes, you definitely trimmed a solid 20 pounds. So it's no soda, no meat. Dairy, uh, pizza, anything. Pizza, none of that. No pizza. That's really No pasta. A little bit of just pasta a sometimes. Bit. A little bit sometimes. I mean, that, some, of those, some of those – Brian and I, we can definitely handle pizza. That's going to be very hard <laughs> to give up for, for myself and our crew. I can at least agree with that. But we'll, we'll, we'll work on it so much and, and into the season. Mustafa, all the best to you. We'll thank be watching. You, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I wish you a lot of luck. luck. We're going to see you fly up and down this court, court. Yes, you in will. a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. 20 pounds lighter. Mustafa Heron joining us here at St. John's Basketball Media Day.